Hi everybody, welcome to part 8 of the Trumpeter um, Panzer IV tank build. As I said last time, we're going to start working up and we're going to start working on the turret this time. Um, hopefully, uh, well certainly by the end of this video we'll have this uh, all together. Uh, we'll have built all these parts uh, and assembled the fighting part of the tank, or what a tank's meant to do, and that's to carry uh, this gun around. Um, well, right, where are we up to with it? Well, I've gone, um, I've got ahead and built a few parts, built a few of the sub-assemblies. Um, and uh, one of the things on this turret is the access doors, the side access doors for the, the loader uh, and gunner and such. Uh, and we can do the same, I haven't glued them on yet, as they're falling off on the back as well. I haven't glued them on yet. Uh, come and have a look. Because you can see here that we've done the same as, you remember what we did with the um, access hatches on the front uh, armour of the hull. Um, we've uh, actually made the hinges so that the, the door can be opened and closed in situ. Um, it's up to you if you want to do that. Uh, just the same process of drilling through the hinges with um, a drill appropriate to the size of whatever um, brass rod you've got about. Uh, in this case, like before, I've used a 1mm milli one millimeter brass uh, rod because that's what I had. Uh, and then once they're stuck in situ like that, um, they should be sort of a functioning door. Granted, we're not going to open and close them all the time, uh, but that's the, the general idea. Um, as for the colours of the doors, um, I've done a little bit of research and there's lots of um, sort of talkings about what colours there are on the inside of these doors from the uh, base primer colour. Uh, to the finished um, camouflage colours uh, to white uh, which is on the same as the hull, uh, the interior. I haven't actually painted this yet by the way, it's just been primed and ready to do that. Um, I think that if they were painted white, uh, once the, the doors were opened, uh, the crew were taking a break or letting some fresher air in, uh, they'd become um, a cracking target for any of the opposition um, so I would sure that if I was a tank commander or a member of this tank crew I'd be finding some way to turn tone the colours down um, so I'll be doing them in the dunkel gelb I think uh, just the basic primer uh, base coat um, as the the tank's been painted anyway moving on uh, what else have we got to do what else we're we going to look at uh, we're going to look at building the gun uh, and putting the tank mantle on. Uh, sorry, that's the barrel. There's the tank mantle. Uh, that's going to go on there like that. Now then, um, I did do, do a little bit of a uh, test fit, and I was a little bit concerned because um, a little uh, a small problem occurred to me. Um, a little bit like you may remember. Remember when we did the uh, machine gun in the front uh, the front armor of the uh, the hull. Uh, well, when this goes in here, and the barrel, which is, we're going to use the metal barrel, when that goes in there, like that, we have a problem where the barrel will always is heavier than the breech, so we'll always have a drooping barrel. However. I hadn't really read the instructions further forward and there is a little bit more assembly to be done whereas this goes in here like this uh, it's part of the breech um, control it's part of the breech slide and I think as the breech I'll try to keep it in the shot for you I think it's as, as the breech slides back along there that goes in there like that now onto this is built there's a small cog in here, uh, and that's free to turn. Uh, if you don't glue the pin that goes through the middle, uh, that's free to turn. And that sits very tightly in there, I'm trying to get it in. And then 
the cog works its way down and hopefully when everything's ready and all tightened up we will have a self-supporting gun. Uh, so the mantlet has got to go on next. Now then, don't fit the end of the gun before you fit the mantlet because it won't go in that way it will only go in that way so if you put the end of the gun on there it's not going to work alright now then there's a few things I need to do um, I'm going to go and give it a paint uh, I'm going to prime some of these parts uh, all of it's going to be the um, what number was it I can't remember now uh, all of the inside I've been doing in the uh, Mr. Hobby H21 off-white so that's going to be done it'll match the inside of the rest of the tank uh, and then we'll look at sort of weathering it up and getting it ready uh, to all put together right I'll uh, go and get some paint put on this uh, let it all dry off and I'll see you in a moment Okay then, here we are. Uh, we're going to put some of these parts together. Um, we're just going to work on the the gun at the moment and the breech, uh, and put uh, put it together so that uh, we can you can see how the the gun itself actually uh, holds itself in position rather than wobbling around freely. Um, I've gone and painted some of the parts uh, that are going to go into the breech. Uh, and the uh, the loaders area. Um, what I've done with this, uh, I've already taken. Come on, come and have a look again. What I've done with this, um, I've taken the opportunity to glue the breech itself onto the gun mantlet or the interior of the gun mantlet. Um, I I've painted the breech ring, which is this little bit here. Um, in um, I think I've done that in a humbrol. Uh, in a humbrol polished steel that's this one here um, and then once it's dried give it a bit of a polish up and it really does look quite effective uh, the breech block itself is a separate part uh, that sits inside the the breech and uh, slides in like that and for that I've actually used um, a polished aluminium because uh, these uh, parts these moving parts as they call them uh, are quite highly polished um, they're looked after by the crews uh, and they're nice uh, uh, they're always nice clean and shiny and that will look pretty good in there uh, just one thing while we're on about the breach at the moment uh, I just thought it might be an idea that when it's built um, we could even lay around in the breach itself uh, or maybe even pushed home ready for the breach to close down uh, the breach block to close down and uh, fire off the 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 round however what I did find is we, here's one round uh, we're about to load into the breech goes part way in and then it jams it does go it will go in if there's a little bit of force put, put onto it um, I think what however what happened what's happened is that there's um, just probably the thickness like most of the uh, parts that have been in this build uh, I think it's just all down to the thickness of the paint both on the round and the breech itself however uh, so I'm not going to get it stuck um, I'll just push it back out and leave it like that uh, right so how do these parts go together um, there's a couple of uh, locating lugs for the parts and they do fit together quite easily uh, I'm just trying to get you to see it without blocking it with my hands um, they do go t together quite well and it's just really a matter of following the instructions uh, on the build okay here we go let's uh, let's put these together um, you will see I have uh, spray painted them and the interior of the turret top as well 
in the off-white colour uh, and then what I'll do is uh, go along later on and uh, weather them all up uh, but let's uh, get this together first uh, this bit here is quite a tight fit it'll only go one way around because of the uh, position of the locating lugs however I do think that we will need some glue just to stop it moving around uh, because this will take the movement of uh, the barrel and the, the gun itself get near the bottom of my bottle of glue now so I just have to shake it around so I can get enough glue on the um, on the brush right that's that side in uh, then we're going to look at building in some of the other parts of the I think it's more of a loader's safety cage just so that when the gun recoils back it um, slides along these rails slides just slides back along these rails in here um, and it keeps people out of harm's way there's cracking detail on the inside of this uh, turret just going a bit quiet here while I'm concentrating and building things in once again this piece on the back here will only go one way around because there's two locating lugs on the one side of it to go oops, in there just uh, touch these up with a bit of glue really coming together now there's uh, I think we're on the homeward stretch for this build uh, once we get the gun in uh, into the turret which piece is now I'll just have a look at the instructions right this bit here is the little bit that I spoke about before about where the uh, there's a small cog on there that matches into the dry, um, gears on there and the way to get this done is to put that in with the breech with the uh, the breech down and then just roll it up and it should hold the gun in place so put some glue into here to hold this part in although I have painted it uh, where the parts meet uh, I always like to go along and scratch some of the paint off back down to the bare plastic just to make sure that the glue really does have a hold and we can get a nice bond plastic to plastic uh, same for the other side Now 
they can already see how the cog is, is holding the breech up before it was all floppy uh, moving around very similar to how we had the problem of the uh, machine gun in that gimbal in the front armour so what we've got to do now is insert the gun now I've just I don't know what colour it really is um, you may see on the end of the gun here where it goes into the breech that I've given a coat of uh, really a, a, a brown rust style paint um, there's no idea what the colour would actually be I'm thinking that the gun would probably be primed before it went into the barrel into the breech uh, it was all put together uh, and in service these guns could be changed uh, if uh, the barrel wore out um, it wouldn't take many rounds um, to go down the barrel to wear them out uh, as in today's modern tanks uh, what we're going to look for now is some <coughs> excuse me some super glue now we're going to need quite a bit of this because this is the, we're going to use the metal barrel obviously uh, it's a nice machined aluminium machined uh, barrel there we are and apply some super glue some of the thicker slower setting type glue to the end and then we can put that let's see this bit happening yeah that will go in there and once that's in really the idea if you were thinking of it uh, of putting a round into the breech it won't really go because the barrel the breech comes right to the end what we could do if you really want to display a round in the breech is maybe slice the end off around and just put the end of it in the breech breech block down now then, here's the breech block uh, this is the one that I've given a coat of uh, polished aluminium uh, the humbrel style and then just polished it up uh, to make it nice and shiny and it's a close fit so it will sit in there without really any glue breech closed uh, ready to go ready to fire right now then the gun mantlet on the outside don't fit your muzzle brake before the mantlet goes on as I said because it won't fit there's only one way that will go around and that will go in there like that so let's put a touch of glue along here and we're another step further try not to get glue into the parts that need to be free otherwise we'll just glue everything up and we won't be able to elevate and depress the barrel so that is beginning to look pretty good there's just the breech uh, sorry not the breech, the muzzle brake to go on the end that will be glued on the same way with some super glue uh, I won't build it I won't put it on just yet because I want to make sure everything's set everything's straight and then uh, we can put the muzzle brake on uh, another thing that needs to go into the rear of the gun mantle is the uh, coaxial machine gun um, you'll see on here I have painted it I've painted it black and weathered it up and chipped it like we did the first one uh, and then I've taken this piece 
are uh, the paint here off the uh, barrel um, because once it goes into the machine gun mount it won't actually go in once again the tolerances are fairly tight it won't go in with the paint on uh, but it will go in like that when it's stripped off right I've got a couple of little pieces yet to build uh, the uh, the baskets got to go on here as well that sits on a couple of lugs underneath there like that really looking good so I'm going to let this bit dry um, put the muzzle brake on uh, one or two more pieces to build um, and to go on as well and then we can look at doing uh, the turret ring finishing a little bit of detail around here um, and then we can look about doing the uh, turret platform uh, so there's still a little bit to go yet we've got some more photo etch um, ammunition holders to build uh, these are optional I think there's an option whether you're not you want to actually fit those I think we'll have a look at them and see what we can do um, and then it's another put it all together it's another step forward and this thing is starting to become a tank all right see you in a minute Okay then welcome back, um, well I've gone on and uh, sort of finished and weathered the uh, the gun breech now uh, and I've also done the same on the uh, interior of the uh, the turret. Yeah, it was just the same principle as following through from the earlier videos on the rest of the tank, um, giving it uh, an oil wash, um, particularly on the inside of the turret. Uh, if you come in and have, we'll, we'll talk about the breach in a minute, but come in and have a look at the uh, the turret. Often if we keep this in shot, um, we've got an oil wash and uh, some streaks and grime and some uh, post chipping on the, the turret itself, just in general areas of uh, wear and tear. If you look around the door apertures, um, you can, as you quite rightly expect, there'll be a lot of wear of people coming and going and munitions and stores coming through the hatches, so they're all chipped as well. Um, uh, the roof itself, um, there's the fume extractor there, it's obviously going to accumulate quite a bit of dirt going around it. Um, there's the support for the um, uh, sight optics, the gun optics here. Uh, and this here, this little thing held up by the chain, uh, I'm presuming it to be a, a breech lock. Um, just that when the tank is in transit or travelling, um, they'd release this chain, drop it down and attach it just in here if we can get it back in focus just in there is a little attachment point for it um so it would hold the breech um rather than it going up and down on its hydraulics or anything like that and that's what that's for um i've also given the roof a little bit of a stain um using um the abtilung um 502 i can't find it quite quite find it uh engine oil um, it gives it a yellowish sort of hue, uh, which I think you would expect um, in, a, in a white sort of finish. You've got to think that there's all sorts of smokes and explosives inside this tank. Um, there's a cordite from the shells itself, which are going to stain the area. Plus, as well, there wasn't the health and safety and the uh, uh, no smoking policy in public vehicles as uh, there is now here in the UK. Uh, so the guys, were, if maybe the smokers, um, will be staining the inside of the tank uh, a yellow. There'll be cigarette smokes and stuff going on like that. And it'd be sort of a, a grubby, grimy place. Um, but it's just following the same principle as we've done before. Uh, and then some uh, UMP washes. Uh, that's the light dirt and uh, mixing it with some um, where is it the dark dirt and generally tying it all in 
so it matches up with the rest of the tank. Now to the breech. Here it is, same principle as the turret top, lots of washes uh, and uh, tying it all together with the rest of the stuff. Bearing in mind we're keeping the breech and the breech block clean and shiny because they would all be cleaned. Um, the bucket here which would be to catch the spent rounds would take a bit of battering so as you see if you can see in there we've give it some washes some chipping and such like that and carried it all around uh, to the rest of the breech itself now here's the optics that we spoke about um, there's no color call out for those uh, it's a bit unfortunate that 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 this kit and the instructions are a little bit like that uh, but I've had a look around the internet and I found that the optics um, are often are painted green. Um, I'm assuming that all the fitting fixtures and fittings throughout the German uh, armour were probably, probably generally the same sort of fittings coming from the same place. Um, so the colour of one in a Tiger tank of the same era is going to be a fair chance that it's going to be the same sort of colours. Um, for for this tank as well uh, and there around the other side um, that's my pointy stick it's a lot easier then is the machine gun that's gone in there and the spent cartridge bucket is in there uh, that's all gone as you can see poking out from the front here um, and really it's all ready to fit into the turret itself now so we'll drag that back across we'll move some stuff out of the way uh, and there's a couple of fixing points uh, what I normally do is just clear some of the paint off where I'm going to apply the glue uh, it's really just something I do uh, whether or not you want to do it yourself uh, it just gives it that chance that the glue is going to grab um, to the plastic rather than the paint. <sighs> Blow that away. Um, I know that uh, using your uh, Tamiya Extra Thin or anything like that is uh, really going to eat through uh, the paint. But there's nothing like just making extra sure. There's a couple of fixing points that fix this turret, the, the gun mantle to the turret and we just need to check that those go in there. Just checking the camera just to make sure you can see this. Now inside here we talk about the support bracket, can you see just in there, oh, there's a pointy stick, smaller one so we can get in, just in there that uh, optic support connects to a little lug just on top of the optics so there's just a touch of glue to go in there if you can reach it and you can see maybe just see just in there how the uh, breech lock would line up with the breech when it was in the right position when it was elevated that would drop down and a lock into that hole there. Right, let's see if we can get this uh, glued in here. Don't want to be applying too much pressure to it, we're getting quite fragile now. And just a simple matter of gluing it. Oops, in the same place. One th good thing about the Tamiya uh, extra thin is that if you apply too much the extra will evaporate without taking the detail away from the rest of the fittings okay it seems to have run that through there what I'm going to do I'll Put this to one side, uh, just a little bit, there has been some run down there, just down that side there. 
I'm going to put this to one side. And look at moving on to the rest of it. No, that seems to grab that. I'm going to let that set first and then I'll go along and just touch up on the inside here just where we cleared the paint off uh, on the supports in here I'll put some glue in them just so it gives it some extra support and lets that glue uh, gives the, the breach and the whole gun mantle uh, some extra support you know, just making sure it's all fit right we'll go in right I'm gonna leave that to go off one side uh, and then we'll go and have a look at some uh, of the gun platform fittings oh, there we go see you in two minutes Okay, welcome back. Well, I've been away a, a little bit more, longer than actually two minutes, uh, but to you it's just um, a quick scene trans uh, transition. Um, but in the meantime, I've gone away and built um, the parts for the uh, the turret floor. Um, it's really very easy to put them all together. I got a little bit carried away. I was thinking that uh, maybe I should be showing you how all these pieces glue together but um, they go together quite simply um, just a matter of following parts and gluing parts A to part B uh, it's as simple as that the only um, thing I did think worthy of note is uh, is this bit come and have a look uh, it's this part here um, it has a small uh, piece of photo etch uh, plate that goes on the back of this junction box um, it's actually upside down um, the instructions tell you where to glue it on um, and I think it's an actual uh, full-size picture uh, yep yeah, it's the the diagram in the instructions is actually full size to show you where exactly to place this um, photo etch plate because if it's not fitted correctly this piece of conduit um, cable from the junction box needs to line the end of this here needs to line up just in here with this cable protector that runs along the turret floor um, now I found a way to do this was to put the uh, leg supports in there first then glue the junction box to the plate there is a, an actual outline on the uh, photo etch part where the junction box fits then to glue the cable onto the junction box so the, the that the whole three parts are together and then um, you can use the, the instructions as a guide but this is w what I found was a much easier way was to glue uh, with some super glue glue the photo etch part to the support legs so that the cable lines up in the bottom because otherwise if you glue it all on separately uh, the junction box could be too high or too low if it's too low it won't fit and if it's too high if it's too high you're going to have that cable not meeting uh, the protector that goes in the bottom uh, so that's the only point uh, of note for building these parts uh, zoom back out a bit so we can see a little bit more of the, the rest of the bits um, the rest of it um, all s uh, fits together quite easily um, that goes in there there's the loader seat that fits in that piece uh, the commander's seat 
that fits in there like that and then it gives you an option there's an option a uh, couple of options uh, I can't find the other part that's missing um, it tells you that there's an option for this part to fit in here I'm not quite sure what this is um, I'm sure some of the uh, Panzer experts out there will probably know what these parts are but that goes in there now that if that part goes in the uh, ammunition carrier uh, is the second option and that won't fit so we'll take that one off um, and then it's just some photo etch part really simple to build which will go in there like that uh, then there's this part which is like a, a, a tube with um, a slidey uppy bit um, now I'm assuming that's part of the hydraulics for the um, the elevation and depression of the main gun uh, uh, because it goes up and down and it matches a part that uh, is in the turret top so that goes on there uh, now the rest of it hang on the turret ring um, it will go together like this so it will all hang like that then onto the turret ring we'll take that off for it just for ease of clarity of this here we'll move that out of the way is this assembler here which is all the gun traverse uh, the electric gun traverse uh, which makes the whole thing swing around on the tank uh, that will fit in there somewhere yes it does because I know it does because I've tried it now, that's will sit in there like that and there's the big electric motor in here which will swing everything around plus um, the manual override or just to uh, take up those uh, extra few millimeters of aim uh, they go there there's another seat that hangs in the back there somewhere like this and obviously the manual override for the gun traverse that sits all in there now then I would like to show you all this all going together I'll go away and paint it and come back and show you all together um, all seated seated in the top of the turret and ready to go on the tank however I can't go away and show you how to paint it because I've got no paint left uh, come to have a look and get it all ready and do it for you but unfortunately I have no paint however I am going to a model show this weekend um, hopefully I'll pick up some more uh, and then we can move on to the next stage however I won't let you down because we're going whilst we can put this to one side we can work on some of the other details uh, move them out of the way and we can go off and have a look at some of the bits we've uh, missed out from the previous build uh, so not the previous build the earlier parts um, we can look at some of the detail uh, and we can look at some of these tools so I'll show you how where's the kit how to use some of the uh, ammo mig tool colors and how to get your tools painted so I'll go prepare for that and I'll see you in a moment hi there hello welcome here we are here's some of the um, the details that will go on the outside of the tank um, some of the tools uh, some of the tank tools uh, there's various bits and pieces included here uh, such as the um, the tank cleaning the uh, gun cleaning rods uh, which are those bits um, there's a jack 
uh, such as that. Um, what else have we got? We've got um, track tools, uh, some spanners, uh, some towing hooks, uh, an axe, a shovel. Uh, these are wire cutters, um, some levers and spanners and such. Um, they're all going to be part of the details that will go on the outside of the tank uh, and make it spring to life. Um, in this scale um, they're quite separate and that's why we've left them as such. We're going to paint them um, and then as I said a lot earlier on in the videos that we'll paint the outside of the tank, uh, camouflage it uh, and then we'll put the tools on so we can paint them all separately. Um, I do re I do appreciate that in uh, some of the tanks in the field everything will have been covered in um, a camouflage colour but I'm thinking that as it's come out of the factory it will have been painted in its uh, overall factory finish and then it'll have gone on to the next stage and they'll have strapped all the tools to it um, so they won't necessarily be in the uh, the Dunkel Gelb or, or whatever colour uh, it came out of the factory um, that's my opinion anyway um, other people might differ plus as tools get lost, stolen, broken they'll have been replaced um, you may even see tanks with a different uh, coloured uh, camouflage sprayed over them uh, from another tank uh, that's been damaged or spares have been sent out um, because the, you'd have stolen and pillaged anything you could um, if somebody else had something better than yours. Anyway, let's have a look at how we've done these. Um, we've used the, uh, well I've used the uh, the MIG uh, ammo uh, tool colour set. Um, I got this from eModels uh, and in there is uh, a set of six um, let's move these bits out of the way so we can see what we're talking about and I'll show you how to paint them all. Uh, because the finish, the paints uh, finish, I'm really quite impressed with them. Uh, inside the box you get uh, six individual bottles of uh, acrylic colour, each with a, uh, a shaker ball in them. Um, and basically for those I've used um, the... Uh, the gun metal for the obviously the metal bits um, and then a mixture of lights and new, uh, light woods there's old wood new wood and light wood uh, giving you they look about the same but once the finishes are, are done they are quite different uh, there's three of them there's a shadow rust and also there's a red brown base um, which uh, are all quite useful colours. Um, anyway, how do we do them? First of all, I've given all the parts um, here's the axe, I've given all the parts a base of uh, acrylic black primer uh, and then I've just brushed everything uh, so I can find a brush got everything ready but the brush find the brush uh, I've just painted these in a in a size zero uh, round brush, uh, which has gone on quite well. I've given them all a, a base coat um, in a black acrylic primer, as I've said, and then we've gone on to add the colours. Um, so we'll bring in my paint palette, which, for what I use for painting, is just an old tea tray, a melamine tea tray, and a piece of acetate. Uh, you might do it different. You might use old. Uh, you might use a proper paint palette or some old um, bottle tops, or something like that, or to mix your paint in. Uh, I find that putting my paints in here as I use them. Uh, if there's any spillage, it's just going to be contained in the old tea tray. But that's that's what I do anyway. Um, so first part is to give the part that you're colouring a base coat of black. Um, I find that this gives a better finish to the colours um, particularly I don't know if you can quite see this in the video uh, maybe the colours haven't come out. Uh, this one here is base coated in black and this one here hasn't had any primer black primer at all and 
put the two together with the black primer it does give it a deeper a deeper shade in the metallics anyway that's that so what we do then is give these a good shake and really it's just a matter of painting them uh, we'll paint this one in new wood we'll paint it in old wood so give them a shake and then just apply a touch to your paint palette and then it's just a matter of painting them on just give it a coat even with the brush don't paint them too thick just give them a light wipe over and then let it dry and come back later only takes 10 20 minutes to dry uh, by the time you've started at one end of your tools and gone right through the first ones will be finished There, just it's really a nice uh, paint to brush you can use it through the airbrush but I was thinking that these parts are so small um, and they're really easy to do it's not really worth getting the airbrush out to paint them all and it's quite therapeutic just to sit and give them a paint anyway we'll carry on with that one that's that one done or half done anyway, that's the first coat on. Clean the brush for the next part. And here's one I did earlier that's been nicely finished and uh, ready for the next stage. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll look how the axe started off in this colour and it's been torn down to give it a completely different colour. Um, and I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, for what we use, so the next stage is um, find the right one. 43 is MiG 43, which is the shadow rust. Now then, what we do with this, uh, we're only going to give this a wash. Now then, those of you who would probably go away and give this a coat of clear before you go on with the washes, yeah, you can do that if you want. But the pieces are only small. Um, if you mess it up, it's not a big deal. We can just start again. Uh, but if you're happy with giving it a clear cut, yeah, give it a clear cut. Um, what we're going to do with this is put once more a drop on the palette. And you'll see it's quite dark. Now if we give it a... If we just coat it there with that, we're just going to paint it brown so we're going to put some drops of water next to it on our palette we will get there and then feed the paint into the water now then you can go ahead let's see if you can pick this up let's come in and have a look it's not really picking it up but if you feed the paint just drag it across the palette into the water you will see don't thoroughly mix it you will see that the palette is now giving you a load <coughs> excuse me of differing shades in there don't mix it thoroughly don't spur it or uh, swirl it all around just drag it out a bit and you'll see in there it's not really coming through in the video but once you try this at home it will work now then we can use our brush to pick up varying shades in there so we'll pick up some of the lighter shades and just wash it on and then finding a piece of tissue which I also haven't got prepared is just touch it off and you'll see there how it's darkening 
the paint, pick some more and just wash it. Just wash it off with some water or the tissue again. And it will flow. Can't keep it in shot. Let's have a look. There we go. You already see there that as that's drying off, it's giving the wood a different look. Now then, we normally let this dry, but we're picking up some of the darker colour in the palette now, and we can add some streaks. I think this is going to be a little difficult. We can add the darker colours to add some streaks and to add some grain effect. It really works a lot better if we could let this dry. And you can work at it. If you don't like it while it's still wet, just wash it off. And start again. See, if you don't like it, start again. Now, then, this colour as well also works for the metallics. Um, now, if you go out in the garden and you have a look at your shovel or your spade, or your shovel, spade, or your axe. There'll be maybe a touch of rust on them, uh, but they wouldn't be overly rusty because you've used them. It's the same as the tank. You wouldn't have a lump of scrap iron sat on your tank if you're using it. Uh, hands are rubbing along it. They'd be clearing the rust off. Yes, they'd be dark. Uh, but they wouldn't be lumps of rust. Um, so we can take his the uh, jack, which is fresh from the quartermaster stores, nice and shiny, uh, and that's the finish that you would get from the um, gold metal in this kit. Nice and shiny like that. I'm going to weather this eventually. Um, I'll probably I may paint this in the Dunkel Gelb the same as the tank, because um, if you went to the local, if you went to your local um, motor store and bought a jack, you'd probably find it'd be coloured in the factory. And I've just knocked a piece off it. But never mind, we'll glue that back on. Um, so we can add, we can tone down this um, shiny f finish just using the same wash. Yeah, you can see, you can probably see how the colours are separating now. So you can pick a lighter colour, or you can pick a darker colour, just using the same palette. Or you can find, just by dragging them across, mixing into them, you can find intermediate colours. And once again, just washing it down to give it a rusty, but well, not not rusty. I'm going to try to explain. You give it a shadowy a look. There's an underlying rust to the metal part, but it's a smooth, uh, clean, uh, a smooth rust. And that is how I've treated these parts. I can bring them back in. It's as simple as that. It's quite a, a way, a nice way to spend an evening. Painting all these bits, getting them put on, and ready for the end of the video. Uh, right, speaking of the end of the video, that's the end of this one. As I say, I'm sorry I did hope to get the rest of the turret finished and the turret floor put in, but we ran out of paint, but uh, hopefully... Uh, uh, a little touch on uh, weathering and painting the tools has uh, been a bit of a bonus. Uh, there they are. So, right. 
Uh, time to go and edit this video now, and uh, thanks for watching from Ted here at eBottles, eBottles.co.uk. Uh, thanks for watching part 8. Um, there's not a lot to do now, we've broke the back of this tank and we're getting on to the finishing stages. It'll soon be adding some paint. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Um, and we'll see you all again for part 9. Okay, bye.